Continúa aquí en Auto 060 esta edición especial con el resumen del 2013. Estamos hablando con Carl Bauer de KellyBlueBook.com, analizando todo lo que pasó en este año y todo lo que viene en el 2014. Y en este segundo segmento vamos a analizar eh, exactamente qué fue lo que vienen los cambios para las compañías aquí en Estados Unidos, General Motors, Force y algunas otras más. So we're back here with Carl Bauer from uh, KellyBlueBook.com. I've been mentioning just in general KellyBlueBook.com, but you have a pretty uh, important title over there, right? <laughs> of course, it's hugely important. Uh, you know, it's uh, senior director of insights, and I, I basically am uh, helping uh, you know build the Kelly brand and leveraging the massive level of data that uh, this company generates from so many visitors who are shopping for cars. Obviously, we have a, a good sense of what's going on, whether it's vehicle sales prices, uh, segments that are trending up and down, uh, uh, you know, which regions of the country certain brands or certain models are doing well in. It's uh, It's really fascinating. I've become quite the data geek. I've always been a car guy, but now I'm kind of a data geek too. Yeah, and it's very, very important because, uh, I mean, like the business, as we were saying in the previous segment, there's like hundreds, maybe over a thousand models sold here in the U.S., and a lot of information that consumers have to digest, and it's not, not easy. So great, uh, great information from KellyBlue.com. So always behind the car there's always people uh, like uh, for 2014 we're going to see some changes in uh, one of, at least maybe two of the major manufacturers in the in the US General Motors already announced it Mary Barra is going to be the the new CEO the first female to lead a, a major um, a car manufacturer and then maybe there'll be a change at Ford so what's your your first uh, thoughts about uh, the appointment at General Motors You know, I think it's exciting because Mary's got this history with uh, General Motors that goes back to 1980. She started as an intern at like 18 years old at the company. And to me, that's kind of the whole, you know, American dream is that you start in the mailroom and if you work hard and show dedication and are smart and, 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 you know, really try to learn the business well, you can sit in the corner office and wear the CEO title someday. And that's... She's living that, exactly, uh, that story. So uh, that is probably the single most exciting thing to me. Um, but on top of that, I think it's fabulous that she's just got this really rich history with the company, and she's done so many different facets of uh, General Motors, uh, you know, kind of uh, evolution. She's, you know, everything from human resources to product development and, and accounting, and she's shown a real skill set in every one of those roles, and I think that's what's led to the confidence that uh, Dan Ackerson, the outgoing CEO, and the rest of the GM board had in, um, you know, promoting her into this position, and I, I think she's going to do very well. Yeah. I, I saw some uh, postings, obviously, now with social media, everything goes, like, spread out the news very, very quickly. And I saw some uh, comments mainly saying, like, maybe she spent too much time in human resources, and some people saw that as a bad thing. I think, actually, it's a good thing, because, like, she was more in contact with the real people, right? I mean, like, obviously, uh, dealing with employee situations uh, within General Motors, but, like, I guess she can relate more to the real people, and that's, uh, I think, a very good thing in these days in the auto industry. No, I agree 100%, Javier. And I mean, being a people person, being people savvy, that's as probably as important to being a successful CEO as having, you know, all sorts of great uh, business acumen, really, uh, especially in the modern world, you know. I mean, it started with Nixon. Everyone, you know, has to look good on TV. Now you have to look good on the Internet. You have to look good in an interview. Uh, on Instagram. You know, <laughs> her history and human resources not only taught her that, I think it also probably gave her a real sense of, you know, how the departments were structured and which ones were working well and which ones maybe could use some, some tuning. And, uh, you know, she's going to know how all these processes work, how, how the employees come in and out and, and what the process is for restructuring divisions because of her human resources background. And, again, I don't think you can know too much about a company when you're CEO, and lots of times you see CEOs hop from CEO of this company to CEO of that company and CEO of that company. And, and they can be successful doing that, and that's fine. But uh, I just don't see a downside to being as familiar with the company as uh, Mary is. Yeah, she was in manufacturing. I, I understand that she was in uh, uh, work in Brazil for a while. I mean, she's been all over. And, and as you mentioned uh, at the beginning of uh, this conversation about this, she's been, uh, I mean, like for 30 years, starting as an intern, a great, great story. And, uh, and again, I think uh, she's going to be a, a, a much fresher 
uh, image for uh, for GMB because with all due respect to Dan Ackerson, who did great, like recovering the company from bankruptcy and all that, uh, you're right. I mean, like I, I think uh, in, in, in their own way, uh, CEOs of car manufacturers have to be like some kind of rock stars nowadays. Yeah. No, I mean, I think being very people-friendly and interview-friendly uh, is, is really important. And, you know, you were just talking about Dan Ackerson. I think he's got a lot of capabilities and skill sets. Uh, his warm fuzziness in front of the camera or even in a, in a, in a taped or a, or a print interview wasn't necessarily the best. You know, he didn't come off super well in those circumstances. So, um, you know, we'll see. He got the job done. He did exactly what GM needed at the time it needed it in terms of uh, the restructuring and the focus and the streamlining, and I think he's put the company and Mary in a great position to continue the momentum that uh, that GM has now got going. So should we drive from downtown Detroit to Dearborn uh, and uh, talk about Ford now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's head out of uh, the Renfen and go up to uh, to uh, Ford, uh, Ford Tower 1, I think it's called, and uh, the big glass building in Dearborn, where um, there's all sorts of buzz about what's going to happen in the next, you know, probably few weeks. Uh, we just saw a report that Microsoft uh, confirmed at least the timing, which is they said very early in 14, they're going to make a decision on who's their CEO. And everyone knows that Alan Mulally is on that short list. And of course, he's currently the CEO at Ford. And we now know that the board, uh, Ford's, Ford Motor Company's board, is getting very frustrated. And I think it only increased after this GM uh, kind of shakeout because they don't know what's going on. You know, nobody knows for sure what's going to happen at Ford. And now they look across the town at the GM and they see things are settled, settled there now. They know who's going to be the CEO. They can get beyond that and start moving forward with other business, uh, the business of running the, the company. Ford is still kind of in this, you know, well, what, wait and see what's going to happen, and I think it's just distracting. So we'll probably know something in the next month, I would guess. I'd be surprised if we don't hear something before the end of January about what's going to happen here. And, um, yeah, we could very easily see a switch from uh, from Alan Mulally to someone else running Ford. Well, the, the, there's been talk for, for a few years, actually, even before this uh, uh, latest uh, wave of news came out, like uh, Mark Fields, who was head of the Americas for a long time, and now has a, is basically the number one person that for I think, uh, will be the successful Alan Mulally. So um, what's your opinion on that? I have a lot of confidence in Mark. I've, uh, I've known Mark for years. I've watched him do a lot of different roles. Again, very similar to Mary. I, I, I feel like it'll be so fitting if Mark ends up being the, the, the top guy at Ford because it'll be a great counterbalance to what's going on at GM and that both the people running those two companies will be longtime uh, insiders who have a lot of experience, not just in the industry, but at that specific company. And Mark will be very similar to Mary in that, in that respect. Uh, rich history, you know, he ran Mazda, which was interesting for a while, you know, when Ford had a controlling stake in Mazda, he, he, he ran that company out of Japan. Um, he's run the Americas for years. I think he was a key contributor to the, you know, forward plan, as they call it, the way forward plan, which is what Alan came up with for Ford when they really needed some direction and focus a few years ago. So you, you look at him, his history, and what he's been doing, and it just, it, you know, I suppose somebody else could get the role, and there's definitely other uh, high-level people that are talented and capable at Ford, like Jim Farley and and, uh, and Heinrichs. You know, those are those are great guys. But uh, I think I think it's just obvious that that Mark has been put on the track to be that that role, and I think he's going to get it. Yeah, whoever gets it is going to be. Uh, I mean, Ford is doing great, but uh, whoever gets uh, the CEO job at the Ford Motor Company is going to be having a tough. Uh, Task with Lincoln, no, because I think they're still. I mean, even though they come with great product, I, they're still struggling to like really relaunching that brand. Yeah, and Lincoln, you know, it's a, it's a process. It's always a long process when you're going to try to do what Lincoln needs to do. And to me, I think Cadillac is a perfect, you know, kind of uh, predecessor or or example of what. Lincoln has to do. You know, 10 years ago, uh, well, like 12 years ago, I guess, because the CTS came out in 2003, and that was the first yeah. really dedicated rear drive, forward thinking uh, Cadillac product in too long. And before that, it was a lot of the badge engineering that the whole company had been suffering from. And, you know, it wasn't like they came out with that in 2003 and in 2004, everyone thought Cadillac was the greatest brand. You know, Cadillac is just now really achieving uh, world class, you know, product and res respect across their model line. And that's 10 years. It was 2003 when they did that first 
real move. And Lincoln has even launched, in my opinion, you know, a dedicated, serious luxury platform. They're still all Fords with Chrome. Um, yeah. The MKZ is, Ford, is a Ford with a Chrome and some different body panels, but it's still uh, a Ford Fusion underneath there. And, you know, not that the Ford Fusion is a bad car, not that the MKZ is a bad car, but it's not world-class luxury stuff. And that's that Lincoln needs to do that, and it's not going to happen overnight. And I, I think and I hope everyone at Ford realizes that. They, they're going to come out with the MKC, their small SUV soon, which is basically a Ford Explorer with, or sorry, a Ford Escape, Escape with yeah. changes to the body. But it'll sell well because that market segment is on fire right now. Everyone's buying small SUVs and premium small SUVs. So the numbers will grow for their volume. That won't be the issue. The issue is to have that kind of world-class uh, image and respect, and that's going to take a while for them to get there. Yeah, it's amazing. They are investing at least for now a billion dollars with a B to try to launch Lincoln. Uh, so we'll see what happens. So, Carl, uh, we have another couple segments. Uh, in the next one, we're going to talk about what you like and you didn't like maybe in 2013 and what you, you're expecting to see in 2014. So we're talking to Carl Bauer from uh, KellyBlueBoo.com, Kelly and uh, we'll be back in another segment with him. Don't go away. <laughs> 